Welcome to Calder in Motion, Alexander Calder. Obviously, this is the Seattle Art Museum. All of these items from the Shirley family collection, a private collection of Alexander Calder artworks. And there is Alexander Calder as we are at the entrance to the exhibition, one of his earlier, earliest sculptures. This is the earliest sculpture in the show, a figurative sculpture, which is unusual for Calder. Most people associate him more with this sort of thing, the big abstract sculptures that you may have seen in uh, public parks and museums. And then, of course, there is the mobiles, and we will get to those, the installation just being set up here in the Seattle Art Museum. This gift by the Shirley's of Calder Artworks is going to be on display here for the next um, nine months or so, but it is going to continually evolve and change. This is not a exhibition that starts this date and stops that date. This presentation of it is going to have a, a start and an end date, but uh, the Shirley family collection will be on view here, parts of it in these galleries at the Seattle Art Museum permanently, and it will make Seattle the go-to destination for Calder in the way Santa Fe is for Georgia O'Keeffe at the O'Keeffe Museum or um, Clifford Still at the Still Museum in Denver. Great little fish piece there. This uh, I meant to mention, the only oil painting in the show. Yeah, Alexander Calder, of course, he's so well known for the big uh, sculptures and the mobiles. That's where In Motion comes from, Calder In Motion, of course, these mobiles. And we'll see it here with the fish. They do uh, move ever so subtly. And look at the great shadows there that move along with these pieces. Here's one of the money shots from the exhibition, this gigantic ground-based mobile called a sabiel. That's the, the term given those pieces. Here's uh, one of the, the mobiles and they create just these wonderful, wonderful shadows that are constantly moving. Calder, one of the most lauded, well-respected, iconic, famous, popular, whatever words you want to use, artists of the 20th century. You know, he's in that group with Jasper Johns and Mark Rothko and de Kooning and Pollock and Warhol. Again, look at all the great shadows that um, that mobile casts and a really fantastic installation here to put these pieces really on a stage, so to speak, to allow um, not only the artwork, but the shadow that they cast to demonstrate themselves. Along with the, the oil painting over there that we, we talked about earlier, uh, another piece of Calder's production that is largely unknown are these little, little Sabines. These here are four, five, six inches tall. And then there's some even smaller ones. Look at these. He would make these oftentimes as gifts and just give them away. These are two, three inches. No more than that. And Calder, again, is so well known for the mobiles like this one, that his uh, gouaches and two-dimensional work, the paintings, the figurative sculpture, like we saw earlier, uh, are mostly unknown. And that's sort of the, <laughs> the catch-22 of having uh, such an iconic body of work with the mobiles. Um, but here, uh, again, we can see another fantastic work on paper, gouache and ink on paper. The year is 1963 on that one. Come around here as we're 
walking through another fantastic, just iconic mobile and the shadows that it casts. I first saw Calder's work in person in the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. They've got an enormous, enormous Calder uh, mobile hanging in one of the um, foyers of the building. Uh, again, this, and you see the shadow there that is being cast <laughs> by that. Uh, so throughout the day as these uh, uh, pieces move and the light changes, it's going to uh, change how everything looks in here. Uh, and again, these pieces uh, over time will be swapped out for others from the Shirley collection. This is the first piece that the Shirley's collected. Uh, John Shirley, who a um, 40-year Seattle resident, made his money as the chief op operating officer at Microsoft in the early days, if I'm not mistaken. This piece is called Squarish from 1970, acquired in 1988. And then um, John Shirley, who's collection also includes just magnificent examples of goodness gracious uh, Jackson Pollock and Giacometti and Johns and Rothko and oh boy um, Joan Mitchell Julie Moretu it goes on and on and on and on he's got a fantastic private collection of post-war and contemporary art but the uh, greatest holdings were in Calder and he has donated his collection to the Seattle Art Museum to put on uh, a permanent display, rotating permanent display, and uh, along with the objects, uh, they're going to do all kinds of events, and programming, and education, and uh, bring contemporary artists into the museum to respond to Calder uh, school groups, uh, the whole shebang. So the Seattle Art Museum, with this uh, extraordinary gift, is Calder Central, the uh, one-stop shopping for the, the very best and uh, the breadth of Calder's production. Look at this weird kind of painting come mobile uh, piece. So you get to see the, the, the breadth of his uh, artistic talent throughout his career, uh, the depth, some of the unusual pieces like these um, circus drawings but then also of course the iconic mobiles and we're going to walk under this one and the ground-based mobiles the sabials <laughs> and that's a quick look at the calder in motion from the shirley collection the first of uh, many many years of exhibitions and programs for Alexander Calder here at the Seattle Art Museum.